So I'm just going to go down the line. So the first question would be for Jenny. Right? I'm saying that correctly. Jenny. Okay, awesome. So what was your process to create your, your pieces, your paintings, your mixed media paintings? When you say process, do you mean the actual painting process? Just like from ideation, like the moment you have an idea to the moment you complete the piece. Um, well, the idea part was a brainstorming session with all of us. Um, as far as the technique, uh, I work a lot with uh, modeling paste, um, palette knives. I use uh, cake decorating, like a bag with the, really? with the modeling paste in there and That's you awesome. do the piping. Very cool. um, dental tools. Oh. Yeah, and of course the piece over there is mixed media, and I actually added computer chips and uh, watch cogs and all kinds of things onto the canvas. And in terms of the media, are we looking at like acrylic? It's yes, it's acrylic. It's all entirely acrylic. Acrylic and mixed media. Awesome. Yeah. And do you typically paint this way, um, or did you approach these paintings in a different way based on the, the overall theme? I typically, um, my paintings are sculptural, lots of texture and relief. Um, the mural one over there, that was a totally different process because um, that tur turned into an actual mural mm -hmm. um, in not the traditional sense um, of going and painting a wall. I painted this large canvas minus those little inserts in there. Um, they took an 1800 uh, dots per inch scan of the painting, uh, blew it up, added the other artist's works in there, and then wrapped the wall as you would a car. That's awesome. Yeah. And was that all, does that all unfold spontaneously, or are there sketches, thumbnails, schematics? Um, yeah, that was a brainstorming session okay. also. <laughs> yeah. um, the We Are Tennessee project involved, um, it was a call for artists in, um, throughout the entire state, and we wanted to show the diversity of artists, and so we included every um, race, age, um, gender, um, it was an all-inclusive project to show the diversity of um, the cre creatives in our state. Very cool. Yeah. And you mentioned the, uh, the, the, the small bits of materials. Like I saw when I first came here and saw the show, one of the first things that struck me was the, the bits of computer chips and MacBook power buttons. Where do you get that stuff? Do you, do you like... <laughs> It was so hard to, computers are, I mean, you really have to, there's a zillion screws, yeah. <laughs> they're so difficult to take apart, but um, my husband's office, um, he had all these old laptops, okay. and so I, we smashed them and took them apart, and <laughs> that's awesome, so that's where, because I immediately was looking, I was like, oh, somebody's suffering this, you know, yeah. but if they're not in use, then I guess it's okay. No, <laughs> and was that, was that, that was from the get-go, like from the beginning, that was your plan, or was it that you finished the painting and you're like, you know what, this could use this? Um, I don't think that was in, in the beginning, um, but I wanted to show the old and the new. That old clock tower there is actually at the Chamber of Commerce, if you go look, okay. go there and look, um, um, those are the old pieces that were in it. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, of course, contrast. And I did not intend to include the, um, the cupola in the background. Okay. Um, I was determined, because everybody paints that, I, would, I yeah. was not gonna paint that. Yeah. But it, it really needed, <laughs> it needed it, so. It, it's not even 15% of the composition. Right. You know, so it's, it's not like it's overcrowded. Yeah. So. My next question, um, you mentioned in your statement down there that I read that um, you incorporated those bits of computer chips and exploration of how technology is affecting our sense of time and informing our understanding of the past. And I thought this was a really effective way to communicate these ideas, you know, by incorporating those modern day computer chip things. What were some of the throwaway ideas for communicating that message, if there were any? Or did you just land on that one and you're like, you know 
not this one. This is good. I think I landed on that. Right? It yeah. sometimes just yeah. happens that way. And I think when I walked into the chamber and saw that old <laughs> clock tower, mm -hmm. and um, it just, all the, the shapes and everything intrigued me anyway. And um, I thought that was a perfect way to contrast. It is. It's a really yeah. effective way to communicate that idea that you put forth. My last question for you is okay. what's next for your style? Do you have any projects that are currently in the works? If not, what are some of your dream projects or dream clients that you'd like to work with? Oh, that's complicated. Well, I am working on a painting right now. Uh, my, my grandfather was a foreign news editor for the Courier Journal of Little Times. Mm -hmm. And so it's another contrast painting because where is the um, where are newspapers <laughs> and uh, where is, so on that painting I have the newspaper and of course my grandfather and um, I have like internet symbols and so did some contrasting there and it's it's layered and textured and. So that's what I'm working on now, among other paintings. And what would be a dream client? Sure. Oh my God, what you're doing. <laughs> really? Oh you my really God, I you? am so... How, how long does it take you to quit making an oil painting like this? Um, well, I work, usually work on four or five paintings at once. I so I have to easels like, set up in my right. studio. Is it that's, or split? That's, that's the way. <laughs> I work. Yeah. But, um, I, look, I, this isn't on the list, but <laughs> I'm just interested to know now. There's this, there's this thing that I talk about with my students called style forcing and style carriers. Um, it's this kind of idea that I started thinking about uh, maybe just a few years ago. And I consider myself to be a style forcer. Like I used to draw in a very specific way. And once I realized that it wouldn't pan out in the editorial world, which is what I wanted, I wanted to draw pictures for the New Yorker and stuff. Yeah. I had to drastically shift my way of doing this. So I forced, if you look at the body of my work from 2008 to 2010, it's a drastic, very intentional shift, right? Uh -huh. Some people that I admire greatly, they've kind of always been drawing the same way ever since they were kids. Like, yeah. it's strange, it's beautiful. It's not to say they haven't evolved. Yeah. They have. But you can tell where it comes from. So my question, my last question for you is, <laughs> Are you a style carrier or a style forcer? So in simpler terms, like, have you always kind of painted like this or you've included these? No. These? Like, no. when did that happen? Was that shift gradual or did, were you like, what's um, what I'm going to do now? I think it's from my background. Um, I, of course, went to NTSU. And um, I was a sculpture minor. And I think I would have be, been a sculptor if I had the ability to. <laughs> to have that type of studio, um, and I do do some small sculptures, and so I think it's it comes from that background um, that I like to show some relief and texture, um, but my style has evolved. Uh, if you look on my website, I, it, I, it looks like I don't have a style <laughs> because I do such a wide range of things. Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So let's, 